How's it going guys? It's me Shane. I'm here to give you another Kanikuman Perfect Origin Arc episode review. This is the third review, so it's episode two. So before I go any further, please help me out. Hit the like button, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you'll be notified of more reviews like this one. And you want to support me even further? My Patreon link is in the description below. Anything you can donate be greatly appreciated. We're going to go to the moon. I'm going to have so many wrestling references because of Kanikuman. Please be prepared. Because the wrestlers comes out of defense with strength and speed and flatulence. So it's going to be a seven on one or one on seven. Mm hmm. Rap references is gonna have um, Terry Man, who represents the Seigi Chosen, to fight the Perfect Large Numbers Corps, also known as the PLNC. That is a lot to say. PLNC. And his first opponent, which was drawn from cool ish looking cards, is gonna be Max Radial, the Perfect Shredder, dude with the tires on his arm. And one thing I didn't mention about Kanikuman that I think might have been an inspiration to One Piece is every single freaking character has their own kind of laugh. So the Dalmatian guy goes like a dog and the dude with the top car who's a fucking car. Sorry, didn't mean to curse, but who's a car and goes he sounds like a car revving up. I mean, look, it's all it's on the subtitles. And you got uh, Budo goes, is he a frog? Are you a frog? Are you a dog? Are you a kid? Are you a squid? What What's what's going on here? These are things I like, by the way. I actually like those kind of things, but I digress. So, <sighs> I don't know if I explained why the bad guys are evil. There, it's so weird, man. This is like the the most lawful evil bull that I've seen. Cause they jump down and they're like, you know, we don't we don't recognize the other perfect children because perfect children, you never work with anyone outside of your basically gonna say outside of your race. That's it, outside of the faction. But you know what you you know you know. Uh, and that's it. It's like their whole thing is like, if there's peace, you can't show your power. And I'm like, if your whole purpose is to protect mankind and make sure the universe isn't messed up, what fucking difference? Does, you know what? You could just have normal tournaments. Yeah, that's it. That's that, that's just the solution. So no, like that's that's the explanation I have from episode one about why they're evil. <sighs> but hey, Budo, new Budo, big Budo, real Budo. He respects Terry Man's blow that he gave to him early on because they put a dent in his fat chest. Dude's like fat muscle. He looks like King K. Rule wearing a kendo mask. If I'm gonna be real. And says ideal blow from the ideal Chojin, and the rest want to fight. And Terry Man is like, yeah, let's do war. I don't, get, I don't give a shit. I'm here. You're not gonna do that to my friends. And think about all his friends. And I ain't gonna lie, Terry Man. Outside of Geronimo, your friends suck. Of course, Geronimo's trying to, like, you know, you can't fight alone, senpai. No, you, dude, you're just, your throat was bitten by a Dalmatian, man. Don't worry about it. <sighs> so. For whatever reason, the perfect Chojin believe that if you're going to fight the enemy, you go all out, even if they're alone. And this is like some weird WWE bullshit line of thinking. It's wrestling, so it fits. Like, I'm just kind of watching it. Just First of all, art looks good. I'm enjoying the art. But I'm just like, okay, let's keep it going. Uh, So... Chairman realizes again how stupid he is because oh I can't get out the other injured children because I thought couldn't nothing happen that's one of my biggest actually complaints from the last episode I will voice them here my biggest complaint is that by my count from episode zero's recap 
you had the Sagan Chojin arc, which had at least 10 matches in it, maybe. You have the Akuma one, which is at least one big-ass tournament. The Perfect Numbers, which is another big-ass tournament. The Fight for the Throne, which is another tournament. So you at least had somewhere between four to eight different tournaments. I'm, I'm doubling it just in case I'm missing anything. You had at least several different tournaments where... Another villain pops up, another villain group pops up, another faction pops up, another faction pops up. Why, Chairman, are you so stupid to be like, hey, we beat everybody, we, there's a treat, no one's gonna show up. You're so dumb. You are so, so dumb. Gosh, you're dumb. And uh, I do like the, I like when Terry Man taunts them for researching the perfect Chojin, the perfect Chojin, the um, Seiki Chojin. Because like you say, we're inferior. Say, why are you researching us? Budo says some of the cold. This is one of the coldest lines I've ever heard. Even a lion gives its all to hunt a rabbit. That is some cool shit. I actually like that. Now, to further reflect real life stuff, the fact that they're in Japan, he tells the chairman, you better get a good stage ready for us and our, our debut. They're fighting the freaking Tokyo Dome. And it is drawn if you have not seen a match in the Tokyo Dome. <laughs> Shit. Look up Kenny Omega versus... Was Will Ospreay in the Tokyo Dome? Was that match in the Tokyo Dome? Look up, just look up Kenny Omega in Tokyo Dome. Or Bullet Club in Tokyo Dome. And then after you watch this episode, or even before, you pause it and then you look it up on your phone. Exactly, looks exactly like the Tokyo Dome when they have the wrestling events. It is so uncanny. Uh, the crowds was quiet. Usually they're all riled up, but they're quiet because, oh man, it's just one terrier, man. Terrier, man. Terry, man. Um, I like what I really, really liked was the promo like the announcer doing the promo and it's like it's showing terry man who's known as the texas bronco and the wild stallion shout out to matt riddle he does his they talk about his finisher being the spinning toe hole finisher and the calf branding the high knee i tell you about talks about his tag team with kanikuman the machine guns and he comes in with the hat he comes in with his knuckles hat and just takes it off and I like, I like, you know, meets in his corner, tell him, hey, this dude, he's huge, but he got tiny legs. He skips leg day. Go after the legs, and then you'll be fine. And, of course, he doesn't go after the legs. He goes straight in and fights like, you know, a hot-headed dumbass from Texas. So, that's what he does. Um, just going back over here. And so, um... Our cut-in today, because I'm going to just skip to the cut-in before I get to the match. Cut-in was meat. Meat is 100 centimeters, which, you know what? Let's let's just, let's see. How 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 big is 100 centimeters? Because he's tiny. He is, th I'm sorry, centimeters in, uh, in feet. To feet. He's three foot three. Almost even. And he weighs 25 kilograms, which uh, is in pounds, 55 pounds. But his power was five. Was it 50? Was it five million? No, it's 500,000. His power is like, he's not as strong as like a Kaniku man, but it looks like he is strong enough to like fight some of the dumber ones. Right. Um. And his ability is the backdrop. And he has his ability. His move is the backdrop. I thought it was a back body drop. No, it's just it's a backdrop, which kind of looks... I guess you can call it like a, a, a half and half suplex, I think. If you're doing it just on one shoulder. Couldn't really tell from the cut in, but it's called the backdrop. His special ability is he can do all of the special moves from all the other Segi Chojin. So I would love to see Meat just like step up and do a freaking Kaniku Buster if that didn't happen already. I mean, in in the recap, we saw that Akuma Chojin literally dismember him, just take his arms and legs off and his head off. And they had to fight for the body parts of him, which didn't kill him, which was referenced by Budo in here saying, you know, Terry, man, you got to respect that he, you know, he steps up because he fought that battle. 
that's why Terry Mann it's like all oh, you do research for the battle where he was missing both arms and one leg and he I guess he won it I don't know I, I don't know if he won it or not that wasn't included in the recap but um Meat is also preparing he's saying hey if Terry Mann goes down I gotta go in there and so here's the battle Terry Mann jumps in he fights um tries to do he's dodging moves tries to do his spinny drop toe hold dude's like my body's like a car my legs are like suspensions and they're rubbery and he kicks him and then terry man tries to do the calf brand tries to knee him in the back of the head guys his giant ass tires on his shoulders stops him from hitting the mat and so it's like oh you're fighting a guy that's the perfect counter to you and his move is you know is um drift tackle so he does the drift tackle and it puts giant ass tire treads on his chest just like it did to special man and other not special man and it it's like it shreds into him burns him down that's why he was called the perfect shredder i suppose so both of his finishers did not work i hope he comes up with a third in order to beat this guy um spoiler man it's weird some of the conversations like when Budo's talking or responding to dalmatian dude who's talking to hard man or whatever his name is saying no you know you give it all we give it all are all from the start that's what being perfect large numbers perfect chojin freakers are that's that's what we do right and terry man's not giving up you know he uh, they're giving him a 10 count, which is weird because, no, I think when you're outside in Japan, in New Japan, at least you get a 20 count. In the ring, you still get a 10. Um, Terry Man does get up at the end and he's going to give it his all. But meanwhile, on Planet Muscle, Kaniku Planet, uh, Suguru's wife, and I guess his second in command, we're at his door telling him he has to come out. He has to meet with, and I, I definitely wrote these names down give me a second guys because these planets are so ridiculous the guy coming out of retirement is flanked by gold blonde. oh 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 i almost missed something there was somebody coming out of retirement i gotta remember that uh i gotta get to these planets guys two giant opponents you don bowl dang it there was two planets and for whatever reason, the weird planets were named after, like, I think food. 48 million. That's their power. 48 million. Cannot remember. Where is the name of planet, mass planet, wife, dude? Nope. Nope. Oh, here we go. King Surami from planet Ichibo. And you have Count, Count Mizu from planet T-Bone. That's why I had to tell you because the planet names are ridiculous. I I hope we get to see the Count Mizu from T Bone Planet. But yeah, no, he's he we we get a look inside of his room, his chambers. He has all his belts up, his pictures with his friends. But then we see the window open and the curtains sway in the night. Oh man, I wonder where he went. Obviously, he came to Earth because at the end, the ending thing we see is at this ramen place, Gyudon Beef Bowl place. Everyone's watching the TV because wrestling is life here. That's what the Chojin are. Wrestling is life. And he, I'm just going to say, it, it is Ki, uh, Kinikuman. He's like, hey, can I get another bowl uh, easy on the sauce? And the guy recognizes him like, oh, is you? Why aren't you there? It's like, by the time I got here, I already started. So no point in me interrupting things. It's just I'm going to let him play out. I'm going to believe in Terry, man. Then I'll step up when I have to. And, you know, you get the cool. He's wearing a trench coat. You get the cool look up. It kind of loses its luster because we don't have that. Those last four arcs that got, you know, recapped in episode zero. You don't have that to go. Oh, it's him. You have like, oh, OK, this is a cool moment. Dude's going to show up. Right. Now, another thing we do see, because this thing is being broadcast, but whoever's watching this is watching it on like some type of bulb. It's talking about this guy talking about coming out of retirement. Now, who could it be? Could it be 
These look like these aren't the um, perfect Chojin. These are the Akuma Chojin. Because on one side, you got the gold black guy. They have a Shura guy, a Shura man on the other side of this person who's like, I'm going to have to come out of retirement because we got to fight these perfect large numbers. He even admits that just one of the perfect large numbers is trouble enough. But now they got to have seven of them they got to fight. On top of the other five dudes that just like, mm, okay, we'll let them we'll let them take care of it. The one guy that's like, okay, you're the real villains here. Or one of the real villains here. So that that that, that was fun. This this episode here very is this is very wrestling. I love the ending. Ending for this is fantastic. Like the ending songs, so cool. I will try to put up the opener and the ending on this review. Usually I do that on, you know, the very first one. I'm going to do it on this one because this is where we get the actual ending song. So damn cool. It's, it's very wrestling. I love the art for it. But we also get to see Kenny Man's face. Like I said, he's he's attractive. Um, next episode is going to be, you know, Terry Man, the Texas Bronco. And Kenny Man's going to come up and hold his butt like you did a good job, buddy. So I at least I hope he won. Because if he didn't win, that means Kanikuman has to fight seven dudes back to back to back to back to back. To back to back. I think that's six to back. So, this, not this episode here. Because of the action was good. The, you know, the pacing was nice. Because we get, you know, the things that weren't the fight and the conflict that cut in. They didn't linger on them. And when you did linger, it's to go, hey, the king is back. So this is a four out of five. This is what I'm I'm liking to see. And I'm hoping that episode three is more of this or even even more and more of this. I'm hoping Kanikuman sorry about that. Hoping Kanikuman shows up and just kicks some ass. But yeah, let me know what you think of this episode. Have you been enjoying this? I mean I I like Kanikuman, so I'm gonna watch this. You know, bad, good, bad, or indifferent. But I'm gonna be honest about it. This, this episodes are going up. They're steadily going up. So let me know what you think in the comment section below. Do not forget hit that like button, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you'll be notified of more reviews like this one. And if you want to support me even further, my Patreon link is in the description below. I appreciate you guys so much. Please be good, be blessed. Wash those hands, drink some water, be safe out there. Be good to yourself, be good to others. Either way it goes, please don't be a jerk, all right? Remember, there are people out there that care about you. Reach out to somebody. There are people out there that would rather talk to you today than to miss you and mourn you tomorrow, all right? All right, you matter. I promise you that you matter. If you want to talk to me, my social media is in that description as well. Give me a follow, send me a message, say hi. Tell me you came from the Kinikuman video. And as long as you're not a jerk, we'll be good. All right. So until next time, which will probably be sooner than you think, actually, probably be later on this, this week as well. So, all right, guys, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to muscle out of here. I said I still got to watch Pokemon. So I'll see you next time. Muscle out.